So at the end of this presentation, uh, there should be a request for a proposer and a seconder to pass uh, this document. So uh, I'm going to start. <clears throat> now this is the CNYC preamble. Uh, the only things that I changed at the beginning is instead of just saying EU ISCHI, it says EU INU ISCHI, mostly because of people identifying themselves as e either INU or EU. Uh, I don't know if it's a coastal and uh, inland thing, but that's what it is. Um, in the second paragraph, uh, it's on the last, um, last sentence, it says, uh, the culture and tradition fully supports a clear voice for all groups encompassing the Cree Nation, which means covering all of it. It said something slightly different before, but this is uh, what I think is, well, better wording. Um, now, originally, this, this document was made in, I think, 85 when we first started. Okay, so um, within this nation, the youth have expressed a clear desire and have shown the will to unite as a group with a singular, strong, healthy, and responsible voice heard by all members of the Cree Nation. And uh, the, the only things that have changed was because it said has, and now it's have. It's just a, a uh, I'm not going to explain it. Anyway, so uh, the, the, the fourth paragraph, uh, I changed the uh, word joyful to jubilant, which pretty much means the same thing, except it's just better wording. Uh, and the final paragraph, um, the CNYC is not meant to be a political body. Rather, it recognizes the overall responsibility of the Cree Nation government. That's what I changed because before uh, it said uh, Grand Council, I think. So, like the Grand Council and the CNG are technically two different uh, entities. Um, to provide a uh, to provide a good governance for the entire Cree Nation, including the youth, it also seeks to work constructively in and in harmony with the, the said body and its agencies, along with the local governments. Uh, and. Where am I? Okay. In this way, the CNYC fulfills a unique and positive role in representing the youth in the protection, recognition, and promotion of their rights, responsibilities, and interests within the Cree Nation and the global community. Second page. Okay. Um, in the vision statement, I changed um, it slightly. It just um, it was pretty much the same wording, except not really. Uh, to empower youth by directly integrating and involving them at a local and regional levels of government, whether it be political or administrative, to thereby prudently prepare them to assume their responsibilities as future leaders and builders of the Cree Nation. Now, in the mission, uh, I changed, um, I, I added an appreciation of life in the youth. It said something slightly different, but I just changed it because it had a grammatical error in order to have a better future for our people instead of the people, because technically this is our document. Uh, and in the recommendation, it says, uh, by development, we mean the development in a holistic manner. This includes the full intellectual, physical, emotional, and spiritual potential to empower youth and individuals and their growth as responsible and joyful members and contributors to the uh, Cree Nation. And the second part of the recommendation, the CNYC will assist in the facilitation of this process. However, the primary responsibility for personal and collective development relies on each young Cree individual. <clears throat> CNYC objectives. Um, it said uh, something different before, but uh, I changed it to the Cree Nation government because when this document was written, the Cree Nation government didn't actually exist. It was known as the Cree Regional Authority. <clears throat> um, in section I, I changed uh, the Cree entity to our Cree entity. Uh, and number two, uh, to strengthen each individual. Uh, it said something slightly different before, but it was just grammatical. Uh, and number four, to strengthen and assist the effectiveness, credibility, and accountability of the local youth councils. So that's pretty much all I changed there. Um, wait. And number five, on the next page, 
um, to fulfill their potential as productive members and future leaders of the Cree Nation. And number six, to assure the presence of effectiveness and accountability of each youth representatives to have a place on the Cree, Nation, uh, Cree organizations they are appointed to. Um, in the Cree Nation Youth Council, uh, some of the board members have more than one hat. They sit as board members and youth reps in different uh, entities, such as Cree Women's and uh, other others. Okay, where am I? Um, number seven, to hold the CNYC Board of Directors ac directly accountable to the Cree youth for all its actions and commitments. So, technically, you guys are the member of the Board of Directors. You guys tell the Board of Directors what to do. And you do that by passing resolutions here, if you don't, if you wanted to explain to this uh, how exactly it works. So um, every resolution that you passed here, what you're doing is you're giving a mandate to the board on what you want them to do. So you guys are the member as the assembly, and then uh, their member would be, yeah, the, the, the youth. Okay, um, all right, where am I exactly? All right, um, uh, CNYC uh, governance guidelines. Uh, I changed 1.2, I just added Quebec because it, it said uh, EU ISTI. And the reason why I changed it to Quebec is because if you put EU ISTI on a postcard, nobody's gonna know where that is. <laughs> <clears throat> the Cree Nation Youth Council has been established in EU INU ISTI. And again, I changed it to uh, Inu uh, there at the end. Uh, language. The resolutions of the Cree Nation Youth Council shall be written in English, except when otherwise authorized by the CNYC, uh, the Board of Directors of the Cree Nation Youth Council, herein after referred to as the CNYC Board. 2.2. Uh, Cree shall be used as much as possible as the preferred language of the Cree Nation Youth Council. The organization shall also arrange and pay for Cree translations of documents when authorized by the CNYC board. We were actually talking about having the, uh, the what do you call it, the CNYC website uh, translated into Cree as well. But I don't know what happened with that. Do you remember what happened with that? Okay, yeah, it's a uh, programming issue. Okay, uh, now, um, three definitions. Uh, part D, uh, again, I added Inu to Inu EUSG. And uh, for assured certainty with the terms used in this document, the singular will include the plural and the masculine shall include the feminine. Now, it said that, but I had to keep changing it afterwards. <clears throat> now, members, 4.1. All youth exclusively between the ages of 13 and 35 of Inu, Inu, Inu Ishti listed under the regional registry of the Cree Nation government. This pertains to the communities of Wabmextu, Chisasabi, Wiminji, East Main, Wiskaganish, Nemiska, Mistisni, Ujibugumu, Waswanapi, and Washashibi. Now, uh, would we want to change this right now? We could, because you guys are, did you pass the resolution already? It's been passed. You, you've passed it and you've... It's been... Okay, um, does anybody have this document? Where's Caitlin? She's the one doing this. She can mark it. Okay, so uh, you'd mark it to 12 to 35. Where is she? <laughs> okay, there she is. She's so <laughs> far from me. Okay. Um, assembly of members. 5.1, the annual general assembly are composed of the following. A, six members appointed by each of the chosen ten uh, youth representatives from the Cree communities of Wabmextu, Chisasabi, and all the others, um, for a total of 60 appointed members including the chairperson, vice chairperson, and two elders appointed as ex-official members. Ex-official pretty, pretty much means like in office and not voting. So if you're an ex-official member, you can sit there, you can be part of the discussion, but you can't vote. <clears throat> um, 
and recommended by the hosting community, local council, or elders council. So all of the elders would have to come from the local community that uh, say this is Wiscagnus, so you'd have to have two elders from Wiscagnus here, appointed by the youth council or elders council. Oh, <clears throat> and D, invitation to Mo Creebeck youth delegates uh, as observer status only. Now, this is how Washa CB started. And then now they're, they got their own uh, their seat at the table. So in the future, we would expect to see Mo Creebeck sitting around as voting members uh, in a couple of years, I guess. Uh, 5.2, the assembly will be given an open forum for observation to the general public and through live stream with the exception of an in-camera session. Given the case of an in-camera session, the live stream will be put on hold or terminated, and all individuals with observer status will be asked to vacate the forum. This is something that I added. Uh, what it means is uh, if there's a really serious issue, what you would have is an in-camera session where you would ask everybody who is not uh, pertinent to the meeting, not voting members, to leave the room, you would shut off the live stream to have the intense discussion, whatever it is that um, uh, has to be discussed. Um, 5.2a, only the six delegates appointed to the, by the respective communities will be given the voting powers and the ability to propose a resolution. So you can't have somebody from outside the community who's not a uh, member of the assembly come in and propose a resolution. It has to be one of you guys. All right. So 5.3, the assembly, the general assembly of the Cree Nation Youth Council must be held annually on EU Inuishi in a method described in the CNYC governance policies. Um, a special general, okay, I, I don't have to read that part. Uh, a, a special general assembly may be called by the board of directors by vote of majority by resolution at a board of directors meeting. So they would have to have a resolution to have a special meeting. So they, they, can't, just, they can't just call one. They have to have a resolution saying that is actually a legal meeting. <clears throat> uh, on D, it says the board of directors of the council, it said. Uh, so I just added the Cree Nation Youth Council because you know, they talk about the uh, Grand Council in this, and so you, you can interpret it either as the council or the Cree Nation Youth Council. So I, I just had to clarify that it's the CNYC. 5.5. <clears throat> Uh, the annual general assembly, whether annual or special, will have the following rights and obligations. Uh, to propose and vote resolutions, mandates, and recommendations geared toward the Cree Nation Assembly, uh, the general assembly, the board of directors, or the executive committee. This includes the chairperson and vice chairperson. So you can give a mandate to uh, the board, the executives, or the vice chairperson, or the uh, uh, chairperson. And that's also something I changed. Uh, it kept saying chairman, uh, not chairperson, because uh, it's not always a man chairing the meetings. Uh, okay. Uh, B, to present all financial reports and explain expenditures when there is an inquiry by one or more of the members of the assembly. Uh, C, to prioritize programs, projects, and activities geared towards the benefit of the Cree youth of EU, ISCHI, and all its members. Uh, e, to amend and modify governance guidelines, procedures, and protocols, which is pretty much what we're doing right now. Uh, G, to recommend the board of directors to enter into agreements with other organizations which request assistance or support from the Cree Nation Youth Council. Uh, sometimes we've had people come in, do presentations, ask us to pass resolutions to support their, uh, the resolutions that they wanted passed. Like last year, uh, we passed a resolution saying uh, we should use steel shot bullets instead of lead, right? Remember that? And so we, we entered into an agreement to, to put our name saying to people, use steel shot instead of lead because it's less harmful for uh, you and the environment. Okay. Um, all right, uh, 5.6, 40 members are required to be present at the General Assembly to constitute a quorum. You can't pass a quorum, or you can't pass a resolution without quorum, so you need 40 people in this room to pass a resolution. 
uh, 5.8. The corporate secretary, I just said the secretary before, shall act as a recording secretary at meetings of the members. In his or her absence, absence the members may designate any person to act as recording secretary of the meeting. Now, there's a difference between corporate secretary and recording secretary. Now, you can have a corporate secretary be also your legal counsel and write your minutes, but the person writing your minutes is not technically really your corporate secretary. It's supposed to be, but it's a, it's a different thing. Recording secretary is a person that sits and writes minutes. Uh, okay. 5.9. Uh, A. Any proposed resolution is required to be approved as an adopted resolution passed by a majority of the votes cast. So you'd have to have a majority vote to be able to pass a resolution. So that would be what, 21? 21 votes? 21 votes in, or more in order to pass a resolution. Huh? Oh, oh you, you like that one? <laughs> okay. Uh, in the case of uh, equality of votes, the chairperson of the meeting of the members is entitled to veto the resolution. Uh, vetoing a resolution pretty much uh, is pretty much scrapping it. So if the votes are even, say the chairperson doesn't agree with the resolution, they could say, all right, I veto this, uh, that's it, it's scrapped. And so they can turn it down and that's it. They don't always have to agree with the group. Um, <clears throat> 5.10, second paragraph. In order to be entitled uh, to the per diem, a delegate must, be phys must physically attend the annual general meeting by registration, by signature of each session, morning or afternoon. In the event that a member fails to adhere to the code of conduct and the code of ethics, the said member will no longer be entitled to the per diem and it will be deducted in accordance with the set parameters. Any questions? Nope. Okay. Uh, 5.11. The rules and procedures regarding the annual and special uh, general assemblies will be established in the CNYC governance guidelines and the set protocols. 5.12, any modification to any of the articles of the CNYC governance guidelines or any relevant documents applying to the General Assembly must be approved by a majority vote of the quorum of the annual General Assembly. Six, uh, 6.1a, in accordance with the bylaw concerning the Cree Nation Youth Council, section three under CNG bylaws, um, what had happened was uh, before, the Cree Nation uh, Youth Council was not recognized officially as an entity by the Cree Nation government. And so we had met with the Cree Nation government lawyers before, and so instead of having us uh, have a, a whole different entity, uh, uh, creating a corporation under the uh, CNYC, what we did was we had them pass a bylaw very similar to how the, what do you call it, uh, the Inu, Inu Inu EU police force are viewed under the uh, CNG, right? They, do, they don't have any real power over them. They can't tell them exactly what to do, but they recognize them as an entity. So that's what happened, what was it, uh, last year, the year before? Yeah, yeah. last year. It's last year. Yeah, so uh, the CNG passed a bylaw officially recognizing us, and so they have uh, obligations to, to fund our uh, yearly expenditures. Where am I? Uh, B, okay, any board, any board director of the CNYC surpasses the youth membership will need to step down whereas the deputy youth chief or a local youth council member of the respective community to assume the vacant position, which is going to happen to me next February. C, the director of the Department of Social and Cultural Development of the Cree Nation government may act as an ex-official member, so they may join the meeting. Uh, the coordinator of youth programs may also act as an ex-official member of the board. The liaison officer may also act as an ex-official member of the board. Other CNYC contracted personnel may also act as ex-official members of the board. The grand chief or the deputy grand chief of the CNG or appointed Cree Nation government representative may also act as ex-official members of the board. The board of directors may invite ex-official members from the Cree Nation government on a case-by-case -case basis if as needed. 
Now, it doesn't happen very often, but you have to leave the door open for that. Uh, 6.2, uh, the board of directors will meet at least three times a year. The chairperson will call the meeting and send a notice to the directors in no less than four weeks prior to each meeting. A notice of time, place, and provisional agenda of any meeting of the board must be provided to any director. The notice of such meeting must be either in writing or via email before the declared meeting. What's that? Somebody give Donnie a mic. I can't hear him. So, like, basically, a 35 year old can't run for, like, the youth chief position. Uh, it doesn't say that. A 35 year old can run for the youth chief position, but they would have to let go of their seat on the Cree Nation Youth Council. Okay, but they can still hold what? it. No, they, they can still hold their in their respective communities, but they would lose their seat on the Cree Nation Youth Council as soon as they turn 36. No, I'm talking about like the Youth Grand Chief. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't say anything about uh, stopping anybody from running. It just says that. Uh, but they would have to step down. Let's say it's two weeks till my birthday. I'm gonna be youth, uh, like the Youth Grand Chief for two weeks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much it, and you'd have to step down. Good luck with that, by the way. <laughs> <clears throat> 6.3 uh, B, to assure that the annual General Assembly resolutions, mandates, and recommendations are properly implemented and that deadlines and budget expense expenditures are adhered to. Uh, to review and make decisions by recommendation as presented by the Executive Committee. E, in case of registration, dismissal, dismissal or incapacity, appoint an interim basis acting chairperson until the following election of the chairperson within the set time uh, ten, within the set time frame as set in the given parameters because it'll explain later on that within a time period when a uh, youth grand chief uh, is, leaves their position or has to let go of their position then the deputy would step in in their place uh, it explains it later on <clears throat> all right 6.4 the first 11 directors present at a meeting of the board of directors will constitute the quorum. If the quorum is not attained, the directors may only decide on the, an adjournment thereof. The quorum must be maintained for the duration of the meeting. A board member may not leave the meeting for the purpose of losing the quorum. So say for example, you didn't want a resolution passed, so you get up and you leave the meeting. So they don't have a quorum to pass the resolution. That's not legal, you can't do that. That's what it says here. I've never actually seen that done, but you know, I wouldn't put it past anybody. Uh, 6.5, uh, meetings of the board of directors may be called by resolution and may be held in Inu Iu Street or otherwise indicated. 6.7, each director is entitled to one vote on any resolution at a meeting of the board. In case of the member of votes is equal, the chairperson of the meeting shall have an additional casting vote or the right to veto. I like that word, eh? Veto? Veto Corleone. Anyway, um, voting shall be executed by show of hands unless the person presiding over the meeting uh, in attendance requests a ballot. If a ballot is here, is held, the secretary of the meeting shall act a scrutineer and shall be responsible for counting the ballots. In both cases, one or more directors participate in the meeting by way of technical means, which is like over the phone or Skype. They shall in indicate orally to the recording secretary in the manner in which they shall be casting their vote. Any director may dissent or abstain from voting on any resolution to put a vote at a meeting of the board of directors and may direct the recording secretary to record such dissent or abstention in the minutes of the meeting. So if you uh, say don't want to vote on something, you can abstain from voting and you can tell the secretary, can you please put that in the minutes? That's pretty much all that says. Uh, any okay. Uh, 6.8. 
The corporate secretary, again I wrote corporate because it just said the secretary, shall act as recording secretary. This is pretty much the same thing that I read to you before. Uh, it just explains, uh, I'm, I mean it explained why it's the difference between a corporate secretary and a recording secretary. So, <clears throat> uh, 6.10 E, at the discretion of the designated officer slash chairperson or the board members, <clears throat> explains uh, as per the code of conduct, the uh, following reasons are valid when the board member is unable to attend. Okay. Um, executive committee, so that's 7.1. Again, I changed it to chairman and vice chairman to chairperson. <clears throat> All right, uh, 7.2, special meetings upon reception of a call for such a meeting signed by at least three ex executive members. The chairperson will call special meeting for urgent matters at at least three days or special exception. All right, uh, you go down to 7.3. Three officers present at a meeting of the executive committee will con constitute the quorum. If a quorum is not attained, the executive members may only decide on adjournment thereof. Uh, the quorum shall be maintained for the uh, duration of the meeting, and a director may not leave the meeting for the purpose of losing quorum. Um, I made a very small change at the bottom, saying um, as issued by the General Assembly, as uh, pertaining to uh, resolutions. Okay, uh, 7.5. Again, uh, the corporate secretary and recording secretary, uh, I made the changes there to clarify what uh, differences are between the two different types of secretary. <clears throat> 7.6, a majority of the votes of those present shall make decisions concerning questions arising at any meeting of the executive committee. 7.7, .7, I changed it to, from CNYC to Cree Nation Youth Council. Uh, 7.8, uh, it said directors before, and I just added board of directors at the following meeting. So, uh, yeah, I'm at 8.4, the chairperson will have the following mandates and responsibilities to preside over the General Assembly. I think it's to preside of, I'm not sure. Uh, and C, I added in CNG slash GCCEI, uh, that's Grant and Council of the Crees of Inuit. So, like I said before, those are two separate entities. Uh, 8.5, the General Assembly can, by resolution, approve by two thirds of the delegates at a present, uh, present present at the assembly, dismiss the chairperson from his or her position for the following reasons. And so it lists the reasons where you can remove a chairperson. <clears throat> 8.6, the office of the chairperson becomes immediately vacant on the occurrence of one of the following. The chairperson submits his or her resignation in writing, the chairperson is deceased, C, have been accused of a criminal offense, if not yet convicted of the said criminal offense, will be suspended from office, whereas the deputy chairperson will act as replacement for the duration of the trial and the court process. E, if the Cree Nation Youth Council Board of Directors decides to suspend the chairperson, whereas it is required that two-thirds voting in favor of the suspension is needed. Yes. Uh, where, 8.7, where the office of the chairperson becomes vacant less than two years in the term, a general election will be called. In the event of such a vacancy in a shorter time frame, the vice chairperson will hold office as chairperson until the following election. Uh, vice chairperson, uh, B, to represent the Cree Nation Youth Council on a day-to-day -day basis, pretty much said the same thing, except uh, grammatically different. Uh, e, to preside over the General Assembly, something I've uh, changed before. F, uh, in the event that the chairperson is absent or unable to perform their tasks, he or she may exercise all the powers and duties of the chairperson. To replace the chairperson in, uh, if the office should the position become vacant. 
9.3. Uh, again, I change it from chairman to chairperson. Um, if the, the vice chairperson submits his or her, his or her uh, resignation in writing, um, C is found to have breached the criminal code. If they are accused of a criminal offense, will be suspended from office, whereas a member of the council appointed by the board of directors will replace him or her for the duration of the trial and court process. So if a person like him is removed because he has to go to court and he's facing uh, charges, then the board of directors would choose among them who is going to be the vice uh, chairperson for the time being. Uh, 9.4, uh, where the office of the chairperson becomes vacant less than two years into the term, a general election will be called in the event of such a vacancy in shorter time frame, in a shorter time frame, a board member shall be appointed to that position until the following election. That's pretty much what I just said. Uh, all right, so now we're at code of conduct. Uh, these are gonna go a lot faster than what I just went through. Um, code of conduct, uh, part three, I changed a, uh, I clarified uh, the officer. We had spoke about this position before, it's called an ombudsman. Uh, the role of an ombudsman, uh, and I had suggested to him earlier that your ombudsman should be somebody who's 36 and over and not actually a youth member. So what would happen is you would have an ombudsman it would be like an elected official. Say, for example, you had a you had something against one of your youth council members. Something bad happened. You needed somebody to complain to, but you don't know who to talk to. You would write a letter to the ombudsman. The ombudsman would make sure that it goes through the proper process and that it's actually dealt with. So uh, it's pretty much a complaints officer, I guess. <clears throat> okay, number four. Uh, the designated officer, also known as the ombudsman, shall report any breach of the present code to the General Assembly of Members, in which case a board member commits such a breach, the designated officer may report the said breach to the Cree Nation Youth Council Board of Directors in writing. So it always has to have a paper trail. So if one of your uh, board members, one of your representatives of the Cree Nation Youth Council does something wrong, you would then write to that person who would then forward the information to the actual board. <clears throat> all right, uh, number nine, a director shall attend all meetings in a punctual fashion and remain in such meeting until a break or recess is announced or if the meeting is adjourned. <clears throat> number 15, uh, a director shall not attempt a, to hide information from the other board members. C, to make important decisions regarding the organization without previously consulting the other board members. Uh, G, to use alcohol, illegal or legal narcotics or solvents during an official Cree Nation Youth Council event. Now the reason why I added legal narcotics is of course everybody knows marijuana is about to be legalized and it is actually a narcotic. Narcotics don't have to be legal. It's just the effects that they have, psychotropic, uh, anyway. So, um, yep, yeah. um, in October, I think, uh, they're gonna have a legalization of marijuana. So, technically, I had to add in legal narcotics as well as illegal, okay? Uh, okay. So, 15J, to a director shall not attempt to purposefully defame persons by spreading false information or gossiping about another director, a member, or any other person at any time. <clears throat> uh, penalty. Uh, the first breach, a verbal reprimand from the Cree Nation Youth Council or its designated officer, which would be the, would be the ombudsman, which shall be recorded in writing for the filing uh, for filing purposes. So, if you get a verbal warning, a warning, then uh, the guy would just have to write it down, saying that you got a verbal warning to make sure that there's an actual paper trail. That's all. Um, third breach: upon a unanimous secret vote of the board of directors, the, the director at fault shall not be entitled to vote, or a secret vote of the two-thirds of the members at a present 
At a special general assembly, the infraction will be reported to their respective local community supervisor of the offending member by the means of a written letter. So, say for example, um, I did something wrong, uh, and what they would have to do is they would have to write to my supervisor in Nemeska uh, that this is what I did wrong. And so, if, say Donnie did something wrong, they would write up to his supervisor up in Wab next to and to the respective communities and their respective supervisors. <clears throat> uh, okay. 18. Any director found responsible of breaching one or more sections of the subsection 16 of this code of conduct shall receive the following penalty. Okay, uh, 19, I added ombudsman. I wrote slash designated officer slash ombudsman. We have yet to uh, appoint one. <clears throat> and uh, procedure on uh, number 22, 23, 24, instead of elected official, I wrote ombudsman. All right, this is. Is, is that like a uh Per like per incident, or is that going to be a full-time position? Well, normally um, an ombudsman doesn't actually get paid. Uh, an ombudsman is just like an appointed official. That's just there. It's just avail uh, readily available. You know what I mean? It's not a. Uh, it's not like you're going to sit around in an office all day hoping for complaints, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. Does that answer your question? All right. Cool. Um, so, Code of Ethics, Annex B. Now, like I said before, all of these were like completely uh, different documents. Whenever I'd ask, say, Samantha over there, do you have the Code of Ethics? She would say, no, I have this one, though. <laughs> so all of our uh, documents were completely all over the place, and so sometimes I would have one, she would have the other, he would have another one. So like, uh, when we're putting all of these together, it makes things so much easier for everybody else. So, the first page of Code of Ethics, there were no changes. Uh, second page, um, responsibility. Uh, minor changes, they're just uh, grammatical errors. Um, the Board of Directors and Executive Committee members must conduct themselves appropriately in public and in private. This is to inspire and motivate other youth to behave in the same way. Okay, now we move further down to the second um, Paragraph, responsibility for adherence for this code of ethics rests with each individual. So you are all responsible for yourselves. The board of directors and executive committees, uh, committee members who breach this code of ethics will be subject to remedial action by their immediate supervisor or supervisory body. So you know, I see board of directors or the local youth councils. Okay, 3.3, next page. Uh, the Board of Directors and Executive Committee sh members shall audio tape or videotape meetings with youth or should have another director or professional member uh, during such a meeting. Uh, this only pertains to like one-on-one -on -one meetings. Um, as, uh, it's mostly for the protection of all of the inv individuals. Whenever I have a meeting with somebody in my office and uh, it's a youth member, I'd like to have the youth chief come with me and just sit down in the meeting. Doesn't actually have to say anything, it just has to be there. Okay, uh, next page. There is conduct with minors, there's on 5.3. The board of directors and executive, executive committee members must refrain from possession or use of illegal or legal drugs at all times and the use of alcohol when working with minors. That's the only change there. Uh, there's sexual conduct, no changes. Harassment, um, I added in 7.2, harassment encompasses a broad range of physical, psychological, written, or verbal behavior, including without limitation to the following. Now you have the list of all the other ones, and I added remarks about sexual orientation. So you can't make remarks uh, to somebody about uh, whether they're I don't know, uh, lesbian, gay, or whatever it is. Now, we didn't have that in here before, so this is just something I wanted to add in. <clears throat> uh, conflicts of interest, 
Uh, the Board of Directors and Executive Committee members shall not provide services to anyone with whom they have a business, professional, or social relationship. When this is avoidable, the youth must be protected. The Board of Directors and Executive Committee members must establish and maintain clear appropriate boundaries and declare a conflict of interest and abstain from voting on related resolutions. Now this has happened in the past where I would mention a person, uh, uh, a friend of mine that does a certain business, but I would not vote on the issue. Because this would be me giving my friend a job. You know what I mean? So that's something that is a conflict of interest. We would not be allowed to do that. <clears throat> uh, the next page we have the reporting ethical or professional misconduct. I had no changes there except for where it says Inu, EU issue. I added Inu like uh, I did it before. Personal well being. Uh, 11.3, right near the end, man. All right. 11.3 The Board of Directors and Executive Committee members must address their own needs. Support from an elder or professional is highly recommended. Now, uh, this adheres to. Uh, making sure that the board of directors are actually uh, healthy in body, mind, and spirit. 11.4, <clears throat> the use of illegal and legal drugs and the appropriate, inappropriate use of alcohol are prohibited. <clears throat> uh, administration. Uh, the board of directors and the executive committee members shall treat staff justly in the day-to-day -day administrative operations in the Korean Nation Youth Council of Inu EUSG. And here at the bottom, um, I, had, I added a question mark because I wasn't quite sure about this. It said, each board of director or executive committee member mentoring to minors and youth must read and sign the code of conduct before providing services because we've never had to sign these documents before. Have you, Samantha, have you ever signed it? I've never signed it, but um, I think um, a signature part at the end of the document is supposed to be added. That's why it's there. Okay, so we keep that part and sign? Yeah. What do you guys think? Okay, so just uh, take away my little question mark. Samantha just answered my question. Thank you, Samantha. And that concludes my presentation. I know it wasn't very exciting. <laughs> Uh, does anyone have any questions? Um, I had a comment about the, um, the board of directors and all the list of ex officios. I was wondering, uh, I've suggested it before, to have it removed instead of, and just keeping the last part because it's a really, really long list. <laughs> yeah. The really. board of directors and the ex officio part. I know. I had to do this entire document. I had to read that part over and over again. I'm like, why is this there? Okay. Maybe we can go over it. I think uh, this one of those paragraphs would be able to encompass all of them, right? Yeah, that's what I think what, the last one. That's what I. It was the last one, right? I think so. Okay, now starting from C to like. C to G. C to G. Yeah, erase is all what that. I'm, yeah, requesting to be removed. Maybe make it green or I don't know. Well, oh, just remove it now. Does anybody have anything uh, to say about that? Because uh, that, that last paragraph, H, pretty much encompasses all of that. So it says, the board of directors may invite ex officio members from the Cree Nation government on a case-by-case -case basis as needed. Yeah, so. yeah. Cree Nation government, that's and all of these people. Yeah, it's all of those people, basically. So does anybody have any objections for uh, removing C to G? No? OK. Caitlin? Backspace. <laughs> Is there anybody else? Huh? 
Can we have all the delegates come back to the table? If you're not sitting by the table, please come back to the table. We need our quorum to pass, to pass this uh, governance guidelines. How long did I take? Did I take too long? Good. All right. What time is it now? I started around half an hour. Ah, pretty good. I did this whole 28 page document in half an hour. How about that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Try to make it quick and painless, but eh. That one in the end, could I go to see one about the document? Harlan? Can you pass him the mic? Yeah, I'm going to say one up with this pita in your hand. <laughs> I got a question for voting like at a general assembly. Can we have it like uh, not hold, hold it by a show of hands, but hold it by asking each member, each voting member individually if they are in favor and not in favor? because sometimes it's like quite sloppy, I would say, the way of voting. Yeah, um, you could request for uh, like a uh, ballots to be written, like in favor of uh, A or B. You can have it done like that, but normally it's always done by show of hands because we use um, Robert's Law to uh, govern our meetings, and that's pretty much how that uh, is done. So. Second one I had, for a question period, like Q&A, can we have it like uh, a specific time frame for each like delegate? Because it's like just question, answer, and then move on. And then that person has to raise up their hand again, but you don't really cover the person because you have to cover each individual of each like respective community. Yeah, you can request that to be, uh, to be changed in the, what do you call it? Uh in the document, but uh, you can also request it straight to the uh, to the chairperson right at the beginning of the meeting. Okay, thank you. What makes still? Yeah, uh, you're good about the voting because uh, when you guys were asking votes, who agrees, then you counted the hands. But I think it would be better if you said who agrees, who declines, and who abstains. So that you have my notes, the individuals. Yeah, usually what you would do is you'd go over the entire process. Uh, the chairperson would say, uh, all in favor of, and then people put up their hands, we'd count. All people uh, voting against, then people voting against, and anybody abstaining, then the people would put up their hands. Because in the minutes, it should all be counted. Yeah. And the person abstaining could request to the uh, uh, person recording the minutes, uh, could you please make sure that uh, my name is written as uh, an, uh, one of the people abstaining? Because, for example, if they have a, an issue uh, locally where they uh, passed a resolution regionally, they could have said, well, you voted in favor of this, and then you're, you're prof uh, profiting from it. You know what I mean? So that's why they have that process. So that's how it's supposed to be done. Uh, I don't know how it was done. I wasn't here for the past couple of days. I was in Namaskar recovering. <laughs> recovering from sickness. Recovering from sickness. Yeah, I've been, my health has not been very good lately. Yeah, we were going to have this um, this governance um, You might have noticed that the schedule changed. We wanted to go over the whole process. So um, thank you for uh, mentioning that. And um, I guess it will, it'll just be a reminder to, to our uh, chairpersons to keep doing it. It's, it's in there. It's supposed to be like that that way. So it's uh, just a reminder. Okay. Yeah, I mean, go ahead, same one. So you got that? That when I proposed to you this document, since you put it like out now at the annual general assembly, with the when they got to just take note that little part there for ex officio, okay, yeah. 
and the sign egamog other than that and said to Miami Snagan that when we propose a document. Harlan? That when we chat. Thanks, Catherine. Alexandra? Okay, I'm gonna second it. second it. What's her name? Alexandra. What Make sure you count the votes. <laughs> Me and Abby speak on in between. Up stuck to your hand, may you there. May no up there, no That one again, Skimut. Abstain? Abstention. Abstention? Okay, I'll sit in So thank you, Simeon. Thank you for coming and presenting the governance guidelines and for fixing up the document because it looked really messy before. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. <laughs> We also had a working group doing it, so it wasn't just Simeon. Oh yeah, and the working group, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I seen uh, this guy's name on the document, Anthony Icebound. Yeah. You had him working on it? Yeah, he did a good job. So we had this, several people working on the document for over, probably for a couple of months now. So this is the final, 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 how do you step? Final step of uh, completing this document. Do you guys want to like a short break? To exercise, move, stretch. All right, so we'll have a recess for five minutes. Be back here at 3.48, not 3.49, 3.48. Okay, we'll be back here.